Yes, today we are going to discuss about uh, bending of open and closed section beams. In this in this we have uh, direct stress calculation, bending deflections. The direct stress calculations due to the bending. Uh, direct stress if you calculate first we need to find out the bending moment. Uh, bending moment means we have that uh, load multiplied by the perpendicular distance but bending moment have many uh, directions that is x, y, z. Suppose how to identify the bending moment. Bending moment direction suppose if you moment direction is x direction so the load should be load and uh, the uh, displacement should be in the other direction. Suppose if you want to find out mx load will be in the y direction or length will be in the z direction or load in the z direction or length in the y direction vice versa. So like that we need to identify the moment direction first then you can find out that uh, cross sectional moment of inertia. The moment, uh, moment, moment of inertia also we will calculate using the same directions. So suppose sigma is equal to m y by i. So m is m and i directions both are same and the y component direction will be the different. So in this uh, stress calculations, the direct stress calculations, if you apply uh, any transverse load on the beam, the beam may be the different kinds of supports. If any supports, it does not matter. So due to the transverse load, the bending moment will create. Due to the bending moment, so we can find out the bending stresses. So sigma is equal to m y by i, m and i both are same directions, y will be the other direction, the sigma is, is in the other direction. Other direction means, suppose if you find out sigma x, sigma x means the bending stress in the x direction, the bending stress is nothing but is the axis stress in x direction, it must be equal to m the m means the bending moment, the bending moment in the y direction by moment of inertia about the y y axis multiplied by z. z is nothing but the distance between centroid to the, the outermost fiber. Wherever you want to find out the bending stress, that is the uh, that is the distance. So this is a uh, so like that we have to make it the assumptions. Yeah, here if you see this in, the, in this diagram, in this diagram we have a my and mx. So if you take that neutral axis, if you take a, a small uh, rectangular portion that is uh, from the centroid, the distance is x along the x direction, y is the along the y direction. So this is the small uh, cross sectional area, this is the arbitrary cross sectional area. So previous up to previous classes we learned only due to the only one directional bending moment we identify the what is the direct stress. Now in this class so we need to find out the bending stress with respect to the uh, two directions bending moment. Suppose if you want to find out the bending stress in the z direction so we have that mx and my mx means bending moment about x direction m y means bending moment about y direction. So with respect to these two we need to find out what is the bending stress. So one more thing is here we need to find out that the cross sectional properties i x x, i y y, i x y. i x x means moment of inertia about the x x axis and i y y means moment of inertia about the y y axis and i x y is moment of inertia about x y plane. So generally any symmetrical one the i x y is equal to 0. So how it is i x y is equal to 0? So i x x means integral y square d a, i y y means integral x square d a, so i x y means integral x y d a. So if it is in take any symmetrical cross section, Symmetrical cross section means the centroid may be aligned on either x axis or the y axis. If it is either in x axis or y axis, 
obviously the offset distance of about x or about y one will be the zero so obviously integral x y d a the i i x x i x y is equal to zero so like that we can find out if it is unsymmetrical one we will get all three components that is i x x i y y i x y so now in this the neutral about the neutral axis the stresses are zero so here if you see this in the figure the neutral surface definition so we need to find out that what is the neutral neutral surfaces neutral surface means if you beam is bending so either up bending or lower bending so that means suppose if it is up bending the topmost fibers will experience as a tension the mod, the bottommost fibers will experience as a compression if the both some layer will not experience either tension or compression that layer is nothing but a neutral surface so in that if you draw that line that is the neutral axis so like that we can identify the neutral axis that means about the neutral axis we don't have any tensile or compressive stresses so if you see this this is the strain the strain if suppose how to identify the strain so due to this from this figure we can identify the strain strain is nothing but changing length by original length here g by rho g is the neutral axis the distance from neutral axis to the topmost wire bar divided by the rho is the radius of the curvature then from this we can find out the bending stress that is sigma z is equal to e epsilon z sigma z is equal to e psi by rho so these are the just we identify the formulas we substitute in this formulas and finally we are finding out that the bending stress before going to the bending stress so first moment of inertia definitions these are the definitions is very much required is already we learned in the previous classes but we will we will recall these uh, definitions once again because we need to use this very regressively in this area so for the present applications so ix is equal to a into y integral y da iy is equal to ax integral that is equal to integral x da this is the first moment of inertia and similarly we can find out the second moment of inertia also before going to that if you see this uh, uh, this formula this formula is if it, if any beam is a pure bending that means axial load resultant on the cross section is zero that is equal to the integral sigma z da is equal to zero sigma z is the bending stress da means we are uh, making about the cross section that is if it is zero the finally if you substitute that sigma z value from the previous equations finally we will get integral g by g da the first moment of inertia of the cross section about the neutral axis is zero then that neutral axis passes through the centroid c assumption that incline inclination of the neutral axis is cx and cx is alpha this is the alpha we are showing here this is the neutral axis this is the arbitrary cross section this is the regular our cartesian co um, coordinates that is the reference axis x and y so this is mx this is my so this the neutral axis one the inclination is alpha so this alpha so then what is the zeta value this zeta is equal to x sin alpha plus y cos alpha so this is this distance is x this distance is y so these things if you substitute back in the, in the above equation then your sigma z is equal to e by rho into zeta the zeta is value is x sin alpha plus y cos alpha y cos alpha as per previous equation if you substitute that finally we'll get that one so then you can find out the moment resultant mx is equal to integral sigma z y da my is equal to integral sigma z x da okay substituting these values uh, sigma z in the above expressions for mx and my and using the definitions for ixx iyy ixy so already we discussed about that ixx iyy ixy but once again we can recall this ixx is equal to integral y square da iyy is equal to integral x square da iyxy is equal to integral xy da 
So in this, if you substitute these uh, conditions into above equation, finally mx will get, if you substitute the sigma z, what we calculated previously, substitute here, you will get this, this is the equation, mx and my. These two equations, if you write in the matrix form, so left side is mx and my and right side is sin alpha, cos alpha because these two components are common for both the equations. We can take it out as a column vector. The rest of arguments we can write as a square matrix that is ixy, ixx, iyy, ixy. From this, you can find out the further calculations. You can find out uh, that what is the sin alpha and cos alpha. E by rho, sin alpha, cos alpha, you can keep remaining here. If this go over the other side, this obviously this is the inverse one. This argument matrix will be the inverse one. So, the inverse of that matrix multiplied by mx and my. So, if you calculate, if you simplify further this one, finally e by rho sin alpha cos alpha equal to 1 by ixx iyy minus ixy square. So, and uh, this is the inverse matrix, everybody knows the adbc is equal to 1 by ad minus bc uh, minus a uh, d minus b minus c a like that this is mx and my. So using above equations, sigma z is equal to e by rho x sin alpha plus y cos alpha, then finally the sigma z is equal to my ixx minus mx ixy divided by ixx iyy minus ixy square into x plus mx iyy minus my ixy divided by ixx iyy minus ixy square y. This is the equation, this is the bending stress equation. In this stress equations, we have included all mx, my as well as ixx, iyy, ixy also. So this is this is the bending stress formula we derive for unsymmetrical, then unsymmetrical cross section. Suppose if you have the values, if suppose my is equal to 0, then mx is only produce the stresses in the both x and y, then uh, if mx is equal to 0, my will produce the stresses. If the beam cross section has either cx or cy as an axis of symmetry, then ixy is equal to 0. So if that is the case, so if ixy is equal to 0, then sigma z is equal to mxy by ixx plus mx by iyy. Suppose either of either mx or my is 0, only one formula we, you, we are getting. This formula we used to, we used to um, we used to calculate uh, the bending stress as in the uh, in the previous classes. In the previous classes, we discussed only the bending stress that is for simple sections and simple bending, and moreover, it is a symmetric cross section. If it is only one only one bending, then we can calculate. Suppose m y is equal to zero, only sigma z is equal to m x y by i x x. Either are. So suppose mx is equal to 0, sigma z is equal to my x by i y y. So like that we can calculate the bending stress. Then so here I am showing here this is the two formulas. And finally, so the nodal axis passes through the centroid means the resultant of, of that one it is 0. That is sigma z is equal to 0. Sigma z is equal to 0 because the on the neutral axis, uh, the fiber will not experience either tension or compression. So that means it will not produce any stress in that neutral fiber. So obviously the sigma z is equal to 0. If you substitute that finally we can identify the y by x. y by x is equal to this is the formula. Finally this is that is equal to tan alpha. The tan alpha means in if you see that previous figure in this figure so we are that neutral axis is inclined with alpha. Finally we are finding out the tan alpha. Tan alpha using that equation. So in this way we can make it. So th that is called a bending stress. The bend now we learn for bending stress for a different uh, ar arbitrary cross section both ixx, iyy, ixy. Both sections are there.